welcome to my channel if you enjoy the content please take a moment to like this video and subscribe for more updates your support helps me create more exciting content like this here we give you the best entertainment news sports name it thanks i'll be back let's start right um I, I, I'm not good at protocol, so I will not observe any protocol. Yes. So even when they, if they are VIP, I generally just don't observe. Um, you know, um, Ario was my best friend, like we all know, uh, and I remain committed to that friendship until when God says or calls me home. You know, having said that, I must also say that. Nigeria happened to Ario, and may Nigeria not happen to you. You see, when we say this prayer, people think it's a small prayer. The people don't understand how deep this prayer is. You know, Nigeria happens to you when the system has been programmed to fail at the initial. And that's why Ario could not even get proper diagnosis on time. We didn't know what, so it was more or less a try and error thing. Oh, he has pneumonia. Oh, it's COVID. Oh, it's this. So they just kept di diagnosing. They were just guessing. You know, it's like when you take your car to a mechanic that is not a professional. He will say, oh, it's the carburetor. Oh, he will say, oh, it's the injector cleaner. Oh, it's this. So that was what happened to late Ario Dari Atoye, which was very unfortunate. I think Dr. Sam will bear me witness that over a year ago, we were here and we we're having this same debate before the general elections. And uh, Mike Higini was here and others, and they were sounding so optimistic about the election. I was the only one who told them that the election would be rigged. I was the only one who told them that the beavers will not work. I was the only one who told them that elect electoral transmission of votes will not happen. I was the only one on this pulpit who said Tinubu will win. I was the only one. So you uh, were the Yes. <laughs> that was what he accused me of that time. <laughs> yeah, he, we, 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 uh, myself and Igini, we, we, we took a bet. Igini was beating his chest that elections were going to be free and fair. This and that. He said that the people's. In fact, in fact, he, he, his word was that. He, he, no, his, his, his word. His word was that the Beavers is a game changer. And I laughed. I said, Beavers will not change any game. And I referenced 2019 election when I was speaking. And I said, Buari lost that election. But immediately results started coming in. And they discovered Buari was losing. They stopped transmission. And they switched off the server. And INEC went to court to say that they, never, they don't have a server. Before the election, the INEC chairman told Nigerians that there was a server before the election. And I said, if history is anything to go by, the 2023 election is not going to be any different. And all the speakers here disagreed with me. I said, OK. I told them, I said, we are just a month and, and they're about to go. And I'll be proving right. And I've been proving right. I do not want to sound like a bad prophet, like a prophet of doom. Like I always sound. Like Dr. Sam accused me then, and I don't want him to accuse me of same today. But ours is a nation where we case building mansions for judges. This is a man, this is a man who has been severally accused of trying to put judges in his front pocket. Same week has his cousin in INEC as an INEC commissioner. It was that guy that just conducted a due election. Mm -hmm. That is the country where you believe that elections will be free and fair. Or that when they are not free and fair, that you can get some recourse in the courts. We, 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 we joke too much in this country. Ours is a country where we do the same thing over and over again, but we expect different results. It will never happen. You see, my big sister and leader in the struggle has just finished speaking before me. And she put the word rightly that how can we talk about judicial independence when even the procedure for 
recruitment for judicial officers is already corrupted. No politically exposed person should be a judge. No politically exposed person should be a judge. No politically exposed person should be an INEC. 85% of people in INEC today, they are politicians. Mm -hmm. Look at the woman we took to court. I, I took Professor Rufus to court. She's an APC card carrying member in Bayelsa. APC card carrying, me and her, we are still in court. And, and she was appointed INEC, an INEC national commissioner. Look at Wicked's cousin. He's a national commissioner in INEC. Wicked's wife is a judge of the Court of Appeal. Politically exposed persons should not go anywhere near our judiciary. Politically exposed persons should not go anywhere near EFCC. The reason why you see some of these things happening today, where EFCC wants to carry out an operation, and the Abelo already has a hint before the operation happens, is because go and look at the recruitment process for EFCC in the last 10 years. It's politicians, senators, House of Reps, they bring their children, their cousin, they bring a list. How can you have politically exposed persons, you want them to fight corruption? It can never happen. How can you have politically exposed persons in the judiciary? The wife of a known politician is a judge. The cousin of a known politician is in an institution that is supposed to be called independent co Independent National Electoral Commission. Remove the word independent from there when you have politicians running the place. So you cannot expect any credible outcome from INEC. See, the Locust Classical case of, uh, uh, of the Abiola's case as to regards to even the insinuation of bias alone. Once the right thinking members of the society feel that the judiciary is biased, it's already one of the greatest indictments that can happen to the judiciary. And that is why the Supreme Court said in that case that whenever anyone is of the view that the court is biased, that the judges must recuse themselves. So a situation where before the electoral process starts, the process is already rigged. You cannot expect anything credible out of the process. I hate to say this, as of today, Tinubu runs PDP, and he runs Labour Party, and he runs NMPP, and he runs APC. What we currently have today is a one-party state. Because the national chairman of PDP reports to Bolame Tinubu, the national chairman of uh, uh, Labour Party, Julius Aburi, reports to Tinubu. The national chairman of NMPP reports to Tinubu. And of course, Gambuji reports to Tinubu. So, we, and this, it, it boils down to what my leader say, said before me that it's about credibility. Ours is a nation where credibility means nothing, where people do not value integrity where people think of stomach infrastructure before they think of character. Because if not, the only person that has even attempted or tried to bring some form of uh, restoration in uh, removing some of the moles of the APC in his political party is Peter Obi, who has tried to remove uh, Aburi. Even the PDP cannot hold his neck. And it is weakest men and the, the president's men that runs the PDP. The NNPP, they are not even pretending about it. It is the president's men that runs the NNPP. So, and how can you have credible elections without strong, credible political parties? It is when the political parties are strong, like we are currently seeing in the US, keenly contested elections. You can see the political party system structure in the US, very healthy, very independent. You can see that the electoral commission in the US is independent. You don't have political office holders, uh, political party members being appointed into, you know, the electoral um, system in the U.S. And that is what makes uh, this institution strong. Again, most ironic is the issue about collecting of money, vote buying. 
The people that collected 10,000 naira in Edo, are they still having a good time? The INEC officials, officials that were bribed with 10 million, 20 million, today, 20 million is the new 300K or 500K. Because no matter how much money for compromise you collect, it can never be enough. And that is why you see former governors who stole billions, 12 months down the line, they already look broke, wrecked. The money is cost. Yes. <laughs> Corruption money is cost. I, I have never seen someone that stole government money that is doing well. I have never seen it. And they are never satisfied. They are always looking for more and more and more. So at a point, we need to get to a situation, a, a, we need to get to a spot in this country where we tell ourselves, yes, that we have been bad enough as citizens. We have been bad enough as leaders. And that we want to make amends for all our bad deeds. Until we get to that level, I don't see this country sincerely moving forward. Again, the most, the most heartbreaking of all our plights in this country is the allegations and counter-allegations of judicial compromise and, and corruption. Nothing breaks the hearts more. The reason why our economy is bad is because of those allegations. There is no, there's no economy that can survive and a, a, a nation where the judiciary is not truly independent. It, it is so sad that nobody is going to come and invest here if they are not sure that they can get judicial redress when businesses go wrong. Again, it's also very important to note that the idea that, the idea that oh, elections can be won Elections can be won by campaign, you know, by ideas. It's always very alien to me because elections have never been won based on ideas or campaign here in recent history. What determines the outcome of election is just like how uh, Dr. Dr. Sam rightly painted it one time is the person who has the more capacity to command the army, the police, INEC, and by votes. How do we fix that irony that keeps happening every election, whether it's an off-circle election, whether it's a general election, how do we fix that? That should be the primary concern of government. For me, the first step in fixing that is that. This set of, and, and, and I am of the shore school of thought that all this cosmetic four-year election, it, it, it cannot change anything that we must dismantle the corrupt entity called Nigeria. And that the only way to dismantle the corrupt entity called Nigeria is that we must start afresh. But any, any race that somebody is going into and they are tying load, for instance, a 100 meter dash, and they put, and, and all the athletes, only one of them has not been putting load on his head. And only, because what happens is that the party in power puts load on the head of everybody that is contesting with. So there's no level playing field. So there is no way that such an outcome can be credible. So every time the, gov the party in power runs to the end of the track and is declared a winner, it's not a free and fair contest. Because the level playing field does not be. So we need to dismantle the system to say everybody in INEC, they are all working for the ruling party. We can't have a credible election like that. Everybody in the security, go, go and look at it. In Edo, they, arrest, they were arresting a particular party's member. Local government by local government, they had a list. So they arrest people that they feel that will pose threats to them on election. Day. That this matter very you know fair, the thing, instead of going into suspension like everybody in Nigeria wants us to do, two days after election. for us to apply the yeah. house rules. Those in support of this say aye. And INEC is our greatest problem in this country.
after INEC are the security agencies as regards to election. And I'll tell you why INEC is our greatest problem. Since 1999 till date, every election we have ever had in this country, people's board votes, people stole ballot boxes, documented on video, everything. People uh, did electoral violence, all kinds, in thousands, from 1999 till date. That is about 25 years. Not one person has been put on trial by INEC. Not one person in 25 years has been prosecuted for electoral offenses in Nigeria. Not one. So, indeed, INEC is our number one problem. The security agencies and our law officers are our second problem. And listen, very simple. Charges can be brought against all the people that perpetrated electoral, electoral malpractice in Edo. But the reason why they will not bring charges against them is because INEC does not have the political will. The president will not do it. Our law officers will not do it. So it is until you do it that we can now hold the judiciary accountable and responsible that, oh, we have filed charges against them. The judiciary has set them free. So while we can cry and complain about judicial complicity in the ongoing problems in our country, the most culpable is INEC. Because, in fact, we had written to INEC that if you, you do not have intentions of prosecuting people in Edo, that we will assist you. We will help you prosecute. Because we know for a fact that more than 100 people were arrested in Edo. But all of them have been released. Just like they, all the people that were, are going to be arrested in uh, Undo, Osho, and all the other elections. They will arrest them for camera showing on election day. And after that, they just set them free. So any nation where people do bad things and there's no repercussion, such a nation cannot develop. Whether it is electoral malpractice, whether it is crime simpliciter, whether it's misdemeanor, whether it's criminal offense, whatever it is that people commit crime. Because electoral crime is a crime. And it's a crime against the state. It's not a crime against a political party. It's a crime against the state. So the reason why there will all be, always be vote buying is because people are buying votes, they, uh, they arrest them and they release them. So why are you telling me that they should not buy votes in Ondo? They, of course they will buy votes in Ondo. So in closing, what I will recommend in terms of recommendations is number one, we must work towards a more independent judiciary and in, a judiciary that is immune from executive, legislative, and individual interference and that the, our judicial officers must be, must be people who are immune from political interference of any sort. Secondly, we must have an electoral system, an electoral commission that is truly, truly independent. Independent in the sense that this commission must be immune from political inf interference of any sort and these may require necessary amendments to our existing laws. Additionally, we must have a truly independent law enforcement systems that ensures swift prosecution of electoral offenders in our country. This is the only way that we can truly honor the memory of our late friend, brother, cousin, and confident Ario Dayatwe, who led a life of service to his motherland, who left a selfless life towards promoting rule of law, towards promoting judicial independence, towards promoting electoral uh, development in our country. And finally, we must have truly a political class who are willing to challenge the system, who are willing to do the work of opposition instead of having deals, striking deals and having midnight meetings with people in government and compromising at the slightest opportunity. The PDP, Labour Party, NMPP must all come together, strive together as one indivisible opposition. They must stop splitting votes because by doing so they help 
the Bola Ahmed Tinubu rogue government that if they are not united as one single whole, they will yet again work together for the re-emergence of Bola Ahmed Tinubu in 2027 so that he can unleash more harm upon our country and upon the citizenry. That all political actors must come together to ensure that Nigeria is salvaged from this ruthless and heartless regime of the Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and that if they do not do so, that they will, they will will for the next four years after this current term expires, and that they may think that election is all about popularity contest, as I believe and I guess that many of them use elections as a way of fundraising. You know, but I am convinced that yes, they may not suffer as much as the people who are currently queuing for, to buy fuels at the petrol stations, but I'm convinced in my mind that they will face a greater repercussion of political persecution. Because like we have seen, protesters are arrested for treason. Bola Ahmed Tinubu may become more brazen after he secures a second term, and he may even put some of them in jail. You know, so while they may be comfortable and rich, but they should not put it past Bola Ahmed Tinubu that he may even attempt it a third term. So the best time for political actors to come together is now. God bless everyone. Thank you. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your support. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more exciting videos. I can't wait to see you back here again. Bye-bye.